Good evening, everyone. We gather here in this very magnificent chapel of St. Francis of Assisi to begin a solemn ceremony of inducting Dr. Richard Allen Markey into the class of 2021 Healing Hands Guild. As a faith-based healthcare system, we usually start our events with a reflective prayer and blessing. But before then, a few words about uh, Dr. Richard, whom we are honoring today. First and foremost, to welcome his family, beginning with the wife, the mom, mother-in-law, the brother, and everybody who came on his behalf. We are here to say a big thank you to you, doctor, because you have shown great compassion through your practice of medicine, and you have exemplified clear-cut human kindness. And on that note, even though we know you love the outdoors, I heard that from the grapevine, that you intended to work for the National Geographic, but as you were contemplating on that, a higher power approached you and called you into medicine. And when a higher power calls, nobody can say no, it's almost impossible. And then when God called, you answered. And that calling brought you to take care of the broken, the wounded, the suffering and that came from your heart, which is the other way of caring. And because you love fixing things, you love fixing human beings too, so you chose surgery and not internal medicine, because a lot of people who come in with brokenness needs a lot of fixing. And at the same time, you take care of those who come to you you look at them and see them as human beings, not in their codified illness. What interested me most is that when you chose to be a surgeon, you went further to concentrate on areas of the liver and the pancreas, which is a very wise decision because these two organs affect the entire body. And not clinical, but at least, I learned that from biology. Doing that then, you have already taken care of the human person. Also, you are not just a surgeon, but at the same time, an assisted chief surgeon here at St. Joe. And you combine that with your practice. If I may summarize that, in a phrase, it goes this way. The soul will have no rainbow, had the ears no tears. We will then bow our heads and ask God for some prayers. Spirit of the living God, we gather here in your name to celebrate the heroic and compassionate years of selfless service of our beloved physician and surgeon, Dr. Mikey, who has exemplified our true north, our mission, vision, and values in extending the healing ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ to all, especially the disenfranchised and the underserved. We ask you to bless him. Help him to always recognize that your gift of life to each and every one of us is an invitation to service. Service to humanity, especially the sick, the wounded, the afraid, and the broken. 
give him strength in body and courage in spirit. Help him to find fulfillment and peace in his work. Inspire him to seek your healing power and to offer his work to your greater glory. Dr. Mike, he may kindness, compassion, and healing be the fruits of your labor each day as you provide services of healing and comfort to the sick. I will now ask God in a special way to bless you. Dr. Mikey, may God who have called you to the service of his healing ministry be with you to protect you. May he be before you to lead you, behind you to guide you, and above you to bless you. For he lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Thank you. I will now invite Dr. Smite, our President and CEO, to make some remarks. Well, good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you, Father Sobe, for those beautiful, uh, that beautiful reflection. Um, I also want to welcome Rich, your family here, your, um, your children, your wife, uh, and your extended family. It is really great to have all of you with us. Um, you're going to hear some recurring themes tonight, um, and it's about your dad, um, about your son, about your brother, about your husband. Um, every day, you let us borrow him. Um, I was one of eight kids growing up. My dad was a urologist, and he was the chief of urology here. And he would leave early in the morning and come home late at night, and it wasn't until I actually got into this profession as a urologist that I appreciated what he gave every day uh, to his colleagues, his community, his patients. And so you're going to hear some fun recurring themes that I think are really important um, and how much we appreciate Rich as a part of our community at St. Joe's. You're also going to hear a little bit about this is a tradition. St. Joe's is, is about tradition. Um, it's got a rich history uh, since it was founded in 1864, and it has built on a lot of traditions. There's a lot of history and a lot of tradition here. And if you walk to this hospital, you would get a real feel for those traditions. Um, and this is one of the most important traditions. And so what we'd like to do is I tell you a little bit about this, and then I'll tell you a little bit about your dad, and then I'll hand it off to Dr. Cunningham. So um, the University of Maryland St. Joseph Medical Center's Healing Hands Guild is all about, it's a very, very important honor to be chosen as an inductee. Josh Foreman is also an inductee and a member of the Healing Hands Guild. We do this, and we started this program in 2013 to honor and celebrate a very select group of physicians for their leadership and dedication to our hospital, as well as their outstanding personal achievements as a clinician. These are the physicians who inspire us. They are role models to so many of us. They think and they work outside of the box. They go the extra mile, even when they aren't asked to. They're shining examples of what makes UM St. Joseph such a special place to work and for us to call a second home, which we do. As many of you know, Dr. Mackey has a tremendous love for the outdoors. Fortunately for us, it was medicine that truly won Rich's heart while studying at Loyola University, where my dad went. It was Loyola at the co college at the time, Rich? Yeah, yeah, my dad went there as well, great place. And it was at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and later at the Cleveland Clinic that reinforced Rich's love of surgery, and not only just surgery, but incredibly complex surgery. The technical skills required to do what Dr. Mackey does um, are only a part of the equation, however, for what sets him apart. As a physician who's devoted his career to the care of patients with liver and pancreas disease, Dr. Mackey's empathy and compassion is a beacon in a storm for these patients who are so seriously ill. It's his surgical specialty more than any other 
where our treatment of not only the body, but of the mind and the spirit, with our loving service and compassionate care, our trademark, this is what is so greatly needed for this group of patients. And Dr. Mackey, Rich, you deliver that in spades. Patients come to Rich feeling scared and maybe even desperate as they have received a frightening diagnosis. Their future looks uncertain. The first thing Dr. Mackey does is get to know the person, not the patient. At this moment, he's not a surgeon, he's a fellow human being, living the human experience. Rich considers listening to be the greatest surgical skill. He assures the person in front of him that they are on this journey of wellness together with him. When patients leave Rich's office, they have a plan of care and they have hope. And hope is important. It's the infinite quality that can not only help make a tough situation more bearable, but it also allows one to envision a better future and take the steps necessary to make that happen. It's a powerful elixir for patients. This is the greatest gift we, as physicians, can give our patients. And so, Rich, on behalf of our entire organization, on behalf of the entire staff and your fellow providers at the University of Maryland St. Joseph, Joseph's Medical Center, I want to congratulate you for your induction into the Healing Hands Guild. It is well deserved. Congratulations. <laughs> now, Dr. Cunningham, our Chief Medical Officer. So good evening, everyone. Oh, thank you for being here tonight. Rich, congratulations on this award. Um, thank you, Tom, for the introduction. I'm honored to be here and to have the opportunity to speak for a few minutes about Rich. He's a physician who has that special intuition coupled with the technical skills which make a truly fine surgeon. As a physician myself, I can tell you that the process of choosing what kind of medicine you're going to go into is not always easy. Um, there's so many opportunities um, and so many things to think about um, as, as we're making that decision. But it sounds like for Dr. Mackey, um, the answer was fairly easy and obvious and always right for him it was to be a surgeon. His talent raises the bar for everyone at the hospital with whom he interacts. But as Tom alluded to earlier, Rich has something more, an ability to confer that genuine hope to his patients, that ability to connect to patients, something that we, we call the human experience, really. I'm not a doctor just taking care of a patient. I'm a person interacting with another person at an extremely vulnerable time in their lives. And I can make a difference, such a difference, in the way I approach my conversations with that pa those patients, the way I can give them hope and, and instill confidence. So that's a talent that a lot of docs, unfortunately, don't have, and you do, Rich, and um, we are really blessed to have you as part of the St. Joe's community doing that day in and day out. Um, um, and on, a, on another note, in addition to being a, a wonderful surgeon and a compassionate human being, um, you've also dabbled in administration, <laughs> and uh, for me, I, I'm really appreciative of that because we need people like you who raise the bar, who understand the complexities of uh, delivering health care um, at, at this time, um, to be willing to roll up your sleeves and do some of the less glamorous meetings and policies and process stuff that we have to do in order to continue to improve. So I very much appreciate you being willing to st step into that, that role and I really say, uh, support St. Joe's Medical Center. Um, I think you are more than deserving of this tremendous honor and uh, uh, congratulations. Um, and I'd like to now call Josh Foreman to come forward. He has the distinct honor of inducting Dr. Mackey into the Healing Hands Guild. Thank you, Dr. Cunningham. I always feel when I walk up to a podium like I should need something to stand on to make myself look taller. But... So uh, I am so incredibly honored to be here this evening and just even more honored that I get to be the person who officially inducts you, Rich, into the St. Joe's Healing Hands Guild. Uh, I got to experience how special and humbling this is in 2019. It's just an incredible experience, and it's so well-deserved. Um, what I can tell you is that, um, Rich, uh, you've, you've earned this. Uh, you wholeheartedly deserve it. And the impact that you've made on this hospital, the liver and pancreas center, the patients that we take care of is just so huge 
uh, you've heard it from other people, and you'd hear it from anyone that would speak your name. And we're just uh, so grateful that you're part of our team, and our patients are just so lucky to, to have you. You know, it's amazing. I can't believe that, um, that I've known you uh, for as long as I've known you. So we, we went to medical school together, and I was just thinking about the year. It was 1997, and there are these moments in life that make you realize you're not as young as you think you are. Tiger Woods um, won his first Masters at, uh, at age 21. He was the youngest person to win the Masters at age 21 in 1997. And, um, and now we've known each other for 24 years. So longer than Tiger Woods was uh, 21 when he won the Masters. But um, it's crazy. But being able to go through this experience with you of being students in medical school, uh, going through the process of doing clinical rotations, and then going separate ways and coming back here and being able to work together, taking care of complex patients the way we are, working closely, has just been such an incredible experience. And I'm so grateful for you because one observation I'll make is that you don't just become the kind of physician that's being honored here just on your own. You have to meet so many people that steer you in the right direction, teach you the right things, and I'm sure you have your list of people that you try to model yourself after. And the thing that's amazing is, Rich, you've become one of those guys. I mean, even as, even as your colleague and as someone who's your friend, I try to emulate you because you have the qualities that make us all be the kind of doc that we want to be. So congratulations on, on what you've achieved. Thanks for making uh, the experience of taking care of our patients so awesome and special all the time. And the best compl compliment I could ever give a colleague is, man, you can operate on me or my family any day. <laughs> so without further ado, Rich, I'd, I'd like to invite you up here to the podium, please. I got tissues and I got a pin. So uh, Rich, Dr. Richard Allen Mackey, on behalf of the University of Maryland St. Joseph Medical Center, please accept this pin as a representation of your induction into the Healing Cans Guild Class of 2021. I didn't know I was supposed to speak. So as my daughter would say, some of the best speeches come when you just wing it, right? Is my speech in here? No. Um, Josh, I will let you scope me any day. So the, the few, feel, feeling's mutual. Um, there were several points that each, each of you guys made which are incredibly important and, and apropos. Um, there are so many people that affect you and that make you the person that you are. Um, so it started with a, you know, a, a great upbringing, great siblings, um, encouraging parents. I had every opportunity uh, ahead of me. Um, so I definitely had a, uh, I said, a, a fortunate, I started from a fortunate circumstance. Um, but as father alluded, when I got to college, I had to kind of decide what I wanted to do and what direction I wanted to go. And I originally uh, told my freshman uh, biology advisor that I wanted to do National Geographic. I want to be a photographer. I want to travel. I want to be outside. I, I don't want to sit in an office or be in a desk job and all that kind of stuff. And throughout the course of my training or training, education at Loyola, I got involved with a group of people and did a tremendous amount of service work. And at that point, I clearly knew, like, um, I wanted to do something with people. I needed to, uh, I, I was more interested in medicine than being isolated, taking pictures of caribou, although that would be pretty fun now. Um, I'm not sure that caribou have COVID. 
So anyway, as I decided to go to medical school, and then obviously I, you get the exposure, like you said, to all these different specialties, and I just gravitated to procedural-based stuff, and I was more mechanical, and I wanted to fix things, and so I went down that path, and one of uh, a very important piece of advice that I had gotten from the chairman of surgery at the time when we were at Maryland was go elsewhere, go elsewhere, get out of here. It's a big world, go see it. And so I went to Cleveland and I couldn't have asked for better training. And two of my mentors um, had an enormous impact. We had a very busy hepatobiliary and pancreatic experience and that having that sort of solid experience, I, I kind of gravitated towards the complexity of the operations and transplants and resections and et cetera. But I think more profoundly, I had two mentors that were really able to make that transition, that human interaction transition from being not only technically superior to their peers, but they were able to walk in a room empathize with a patient that was newly diagnosed with liver or pancreatic cancer, and within 15 minutes, they're high-fiving them on the way out the door. I said, how the, what the, what just happened? You know, how did they all of a sudden just completely flip the situation to a dire straits to a, we're gonna beat this? And, uh, you know, I've tried to emulate, um, that every day. So one of the hardest decisions I had professionally was towards the end of my fellowship, about halfway through my fellowship, I had to decide what to do. I needed a job. And I had two, I think, major opportunities and the decision was to either stay in Cleveland and be an incredibly busy pancreatic surgeon or to branch out. And at the time, and my voice is cracking. I feel like I have puberty. <laughs> How we doing there, little guy? <laughs> I'm just teasing. Um, I had a decision to make. We had a decision to make. Uh, we had just had our second child, and uh, we didn't have any family in Cleveland. Um, so we decided to come back to, to Baltimore and... and you know, this was a very attractive place. I mean, at the time, Mark Krasna had just become, and I knew Krasna from uh, University of Maryland. I had heard that they had just hired this young, you know, oncologist, Rick Schrader. Um, I knew Josh was coming on board. So I knew that there was a young sort of developing team that would do great things here. And I tell you, the, it was probably one of the best decisions I made. I mean, the colleagues here, I wouldn't be here today, um, up here receiving this, if it weren't for everybody here at St. Joe's. And so, um, I thank you all. This is very humbling. So, I accept the pin. <laughs> and you can scope me anything.